Welcome to another episode of the Travel Hoopers Podcast. I am your host, Alan Pritchard Jr., and in front of me are my best two, my two best friends in the world, Philip Dixon and Calvin McGowan. Guys, go ahead and let the people hear your voice. Um, hey, everybody. Once again, I'm Calvin McGowan. It's a pleasure to be here. College basketball is in full swing, and it was a it was it was a fun weekend. If you were a fan of SWAC teams. What's going on, everybody? It's Phil Dixon, a.k.a. One in a Million. It goes on and on and on. Um, shout out to Fisk University for their homecoming this weekend. Um, yep, basketball time is in the air, just like Christmas, and we are here to satisfy you all with our knowledge. Uh, shout out to that early 2000s r and uh, reference. Uh, mm-hmm. I hope our younger viewers, listeners understood it. Uh, if you don't, step it up. You got a whole, you got a whole computer in your back pocket. Use it. Right. What, what's that? What's that one joint that come on uh, iPhones now, where you can just Shazam? Everybody got Shazam. You're probably not going to figure out who it is by Phillips' awful vocals, but you you type in the lyrics. Maybe I'm gonna keep it a buck though. I can sing. I just chose not to. Keep going. Philip, you've been telling me that for almost 10 years. I've never heard you say I got, I got facts right now. If I, if I got fucking phone a friend, you know. But that's, that's not the issue. Basketball time. Let's go. Yeah, so, guys. Sorry, I'm, I'm just disgruntled by Philip's lies. Uh, so, guys, we're going to go ahead and get straight into the action. And the action is not going to be what you want, especially if you're a fan of any particular NBA franchise. Because we're just about to attack NBA fan bases, because we have nothing else to talk about. It's still really early in the season. Uh, teams are almost at that 20-game mark. Why so we so, kinda... Why are you so honest? <laughs> oh, why? What I'm like, why? You could have been like, yeah, we're going to talk NBA fan bases. But you said, yeah, we're going to take NBA fan bases. We got nothing to talk about. <laughs> we don't. It's really early in the season. Like, we... The good teams are good. The Bucks are good. The Celtics are good. Duh. The bad Lakers teams are, are bad. Nice. And we're, we know they're supposed to be bad. There's a few uh, teams that kind of, like, mess things up, but we got an 82-game season. Yep. If you're still good in February, we can talk about you. Until then, we're going to make other stuff to talk about, like how I don't understand how any New York Knicks fans exist. I get it if you grew up in the city. Actually, I don't even get it if you grew up in the city. As a person who does not like the Royals or the Kansas City Chiefs because they sucked for the first 20 years of my life, it's really, really hard for me to root for them as an adult just because they decided to get good in the last decade. For a New York Knicks fan who is my age, outside of the mellow years, which you were a teenager at that point, don't get it. And it was only two years. They didn't do anything. This is like the second second round, one of those years. Wait, do you not understand fandom? I don't think I do. Like, I don't really look up to like people or things. So, unless you kind of got to earn people me, or things. Like, uh, yeah, no. What's that mean? Like you, you have to you have to do something for me to be like, ooh, I'm interested. I can look for you. Okay. Like so like there's no one you look up to, maybe in sports, basketball for specifically, that you go, ooh, that's crazy. I got like LeBron and go, that like it's an easy example, right? You don't look at LeBron and go, Wow, that man can do things no one else can in this in this world essentially can do. That's crazy. You just, you just look at that and go, eh, and keep on going. Something like that's that's really dope. He's a really good player. That's that's where he ends for me. Like um, I really like LeBron. Been following his career. Since. What about what about old basketball players? Like uh, ones that like did something for civil rights or whatever, right? Like something for like outside of basketball, incorporating that into like their legacy. None of that either. Okay, so I got one person in particular that I want to talk to about, but he recently passed, so I'm not going to do it. Um, 
Bill Russell? You know, we hear. Bill Russell did amazing things. Bill Russell has three ex-wives. They're all white. It's a little hard for me to rock. <laughs> it's a little hard for me to rock, but you're a oh. ex, like, yeah, you have you you only dated white women, and you, my bad, you only married white women. I get it. You were in Boston a good portion of that time, but you were from the South. You went to a Southern school. Mm. You could have. You could have. I'm leaving that exactly where it's at for the time it, being. But you see why. Like, I, I look at other layers to things, and that stops me from having, like, that level of fandom. That's why I can't get behind the Kansas City Chiefs. That's why I have t- taken a break from OKC. I love the Thunder. That is one of the teams that I grew up watching. I cannot mess with them until they are a respectable team that can actually compete for at least a playoff spot. They can't do that. But you grew up with them being that. So as soon as they aren't that, you just like, I'm done? You have Russell Westbrook, who, even as a rookie, when he was raw, was still amazing as an athlete. You also got Kevin Durant, who I, I fell in... I fell in love with Kevin Durant easy. Uh, he did a commercial with Gilbert Arenas for like 2K7, and he was getting but he was giving Arenas buckets, and I was like, "Felt that's my favorite player." Because Gilbert Arenas was my favorite player before that. So, yeah, you, you see where I'm going with that. You got you got to do something. That though. I look, I want slow. I don't see you going with that. So, they were good when you were coming up. So you were a fan of that. Yeah. So for a long time, you didn't know them to be bad. Now, they weren't, they haven't been to Oklahoma City for a long time. I'm assuming, correct if I'm wrong, you weren't a Seattle Super Science fan. Not at all. Never saw a game. So they, what, what, what year did they come to uh, Oklahoma? 2005? No, it had to be 2008. Because it was after. Because KD played a year. So maybe 2009. So you grew up only knowing them as winners. Yep. And then as soon as they're not winners for three, four years, you're like, no, nah, I'm good? No, no, no. Is is the difference between not being good for three, four years. They lost everybody that I was a fan of, and they specifically came out and told us, hey, we about to suck, so these first round picks turn into something. So and you were a fan. Watch that. So you weren't a fan of the organization. You were a fan of the team. Yeah. So you're not an OKC Thunder fan? No, no. OKC, t- OKC Thunder is the team. Yeah. The organization you're the counts as the front office. I'm cool. I'm cool with the front office. I like our guys in the front office. If you think I'm about to be out here wearing what's, – what's the uh, GM name? I can't think of his name right now. We, ha- we haven't heard nothing from him in a minute. I can't uh, help. I'm not about to wear a GM jersey. You feel me? Well, I'd hope not. Um, and nobody on that team right now, I want to wear their jersey. I like Shea Gilders, Alexander. I do. Don't want to wear his jersey. Okay. Now, I'm not that petty. I understand loyalty. So, like, being for, I, I mean, I do, right? Uh, I am a homer, right? Damn. Chiefs, Royals. When they were bad, still a fan. And they were bad my whole life. They were bad way before I was even born, right? Still a fan. And then they, with that, that going through that and being a fan of them during those times, when they eventually do win, you tend to that 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 feeling becomes better. There's a, there, there's an exclamation point at the end of that feeling when they eventually become good. If you just don't pay attention to them, but only pay attention to them when they're good, then you lose a little bit of the experience. Now, that is just my opinion. And I think as a for those individuals that are New York Knicks fans, they probably feel that as well. Because, sure, there will be ups and downs, and sometimes the ups aren't nearly as high as the NBA championship. But um, I also think... To go along with that, that basketball is a different sport in comparison to other sports. Basketball, very few teams that are that haven't won yet will win, right? Like the Dallas Mavericks are like Dallas Mavericks and like 
you know, the Cavaliers, they are few and far in between, right? Usually it will be Celtic. Usually it will be a Laker. Usually it will be these other teams that in, in the sl- it's just, there's a slim chance I mean, for being other teams more recently than 30-plus years ago, right? But, like, other well, sports, like baseball, know, the, football, the, the league did expand a couple times. That's going to increase your options. So what? The league did expand a couple of times. Oh, yeah? Philip, get to the point, bro. I don't, I don't get where this is going. Sorry. That gum was super old. Um, that was gross. Um, the point is, I understand the loyalty aspect of the Knicks. If you're a homer, you have pride in where you're from, aka from New York City, then you're going to like and root for anything New York City bound. That's why they, and, and the emotions that come along with that when it comes to the Knicks. So when they eventually do win, because at some point they're going to win the big one, right? Eventually when they do win, that roller coaster ride that you went through all the way into that moment is going to be worth it. Now, you'll give me the look like, will they win? They have too much money to eventually not win. Eventually, right? What What in the last 20 years, 30 years, I like, showed you that it's true? Earl the Pearl was on the squad the last time they won. Money. Eventually, they will fi- eventually that will work. In all sports, that happens eventually. No, no. Money does surprise. I, I, I think you money tracks surprisingly it. poorly. To wins, you know, and, no, no, no. And chips. money, yeah. money does surprisingly poor when it comes to long-term winning. When it comes to winning in a bunch, money tends to, uh, or when it comes to winning in not, like, like like one or two years, money tends to do that. Now, if you want to mm. build a system and all of a sudden a dynasty, things like that, that's a whole different conversation. But if you just want to one year, hit and quit it. I mean, Money it fails in, in, in one-year situations frequently, too. Otherwise, like, the Yankees would win every year. And you have to be good. And they're not good. Nobody's, nobody, as much as we talk about money being the deciding factor, like, over the past 20 years, the biggest signee that the New York Knicks have gotten is Carmelo Anthony, who we can all say is a superstar. At that time, their second biggest signing, Julius Randle. That's not their second biggest signing in the last twenty years. Julius Randle. Can you tell me somebody else? Yeah. Who? Jeremy Lin. That doesn't I... count. <laughs> you okay, know that one. doesn't. Count. <laughs> of course it don't. Of course it don't count. Like, like, come on. Yeah. Who do you think I am? Of course it that was count. fun though. Uh, listen. For eight games. No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Do you want to hear, speaking of Nick fans, oh. the fact that, forget what, for the, forget this last conversation we had. Because now I'm just upset about Nick fans. I wasn't upset. I was trying to get their side, trying to help them out. But actually, Jerry, this whole Jeremy Lin thing re-reminded me kind of how obnoxious they are. This man just got a documentary. Okay. Oh, Jeremy Lin? Yes. I might have to check that out, to be honest with you. Based off two weeks? I know he's like, no, no, no. I know he's a person, and he went to college, and he went to the ranks to eventually get to, you know, the New York Knicks, and then all of a sudden he could, he he, he was a, a part of a representation of Asian Amer of Asian the Asian Americans in the in the NBA, and then he went to China because it, we couldn't stay in the league. I don't care about that. We know Jeremy Lin based off two weeks, and this man got a whole documentary where. Hassan Minaj, the comedian, is on there going, it was incredible. There was nothing like it. Nothing like it? It's Jeremy Lin. You, you, nothing like it? It was Jeremy Lin. If you were alive, you would understand how stupid this was. So what? I said, we did get one of the worst headlines of all time out of it. Which is what? I can't repeat it. But uh, you you can look it up. The C word in the armor. 
That's crazy. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Who put that to? Who let that print? Bro, somebody's editor got fired that day. Hopefully. That's wild. <laughs> Jeez. That's wild. I could have gone my whole life without knowing that. Like, but I'm supposed to say this. On the website. But in, but I don't even know how, why we started off with the Knicks. Because the Knicks aren't the most easily aren't the most annoying fan base in the NBA. It's the Lakers. Easily. I don't even I don't even count them. No, 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 no. It's so widespread that I, I there's a there's so many of them that I expect there to be a good amount of dumbasses. No, no, no. The issue is I expect some stupidity. The issue is there's too many. There is enough stupidity amongst Laker fans. To make and to have an issue with me, you know what I mean? Because like it's 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 we win, we know about Laker basketball barely, and we but we don't know about basketball. We only barely know about our team, but we only but we don't know about basketball in a general sense at all. Having a conversation generally with a Lakers fan about basketball is the biggest waste of time. Because they know nothing. You can't have an intellectual, articulate debate about anything basketball because Kobe Bryant's name will always come up as number one or two, which I do think generally Kobe Bryant is lower on people's totem pole for stupid reasons. But but he is always one or two with them. And then they bring up Shaq. They bring up Shaq. All of a sudden, now they bring up LeBron. And they have uh, Magic Johnson and... And and Kareem, it's like Showtime Lakers. Name me six players. Right now, they can't do it. Oh. Lakers people, Lakers fans can't do it. It is Magic and it's Kareem. What's what's what, what what was Kareem's name before it was Kareem? They don't know because they don't know basketball. That's the issue. Lakers fans irritate me like no other, and it makes me sick. <clears throat> I'll be real with you. I have not met a Lakers fan who wasn't fun. That's fun? what I'm rocking with. They were fun. They all they got good energy. They might not know nothing, but they they show up and they will entertain themselves. And I'm the Lakers I've are the seen, only team to always have bandwagon fans. Exactly. And I've never seen I've never seen a hating Lakers fan. What? They, I've never seen like a, a hater Lakers fan. Like where they're like, oh, we we hate this. Oh, okay, that's that's a lot. I forgot about all them where they suck. Um I mean, if we being real, they still in the middle of that of sucking for the past. Also, side note, can can we all agree that like because like at some point someone's gonna try and make this argument that like can we agree that LeBron and A D won't go down in history as Lakers greats? What are we doing? Yeah. Absolutely. Ab- Listen, in comparison to all the Lakers greats there are, you being good for one year means nothing. For the- No, look, at its core, Lakers fans and the Laker- Lakers as an organization, they have been successful with some very successful duos and some very successful teams. The LeBron AD is at the bottom of the totem pole, like the bottom of the Lakers, quote unquote, great players to be together. I I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think the thing that we're missing, all of the other Laker greats, longevity. We do not have that with LeBron and AD. What is this, year three for LeBron and AD together? Yeah. Yeah. Unless they came in and were just monsters. We're talking about Scottie Pippen and Jordan type duo where they can't do anything but win. That was the only way they would get cemented as Laker greats. Like, do y'all remember at when like LeBron came over? They were talking about like, does LeBron get on the Lakers Mount Rushmore? And in my head, from w- everything that LeBron has done, yes. He belongs on your What'd you say? Oh my God. No, no. From everything LeBron has done. My bad. I, I, my bad, my bad. I lost, I lost a lot of respect for you. Keep going. 
from everything LeBron has done, he deserves to be on the Mount Rushmore. But when you look at what he's done for the Lakers, there's no way he gets on the Mount Rushmore. There are so many other players who deserve points on the Mount Rushmore than LeBron. LeBron might be... LeBron might be over LeBron when it comes to being on the Mount Rushmore of Lakers. LeBron's behind James Worthy. Mm-hmm. I think I, LeBron might be behind. Uh, 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 LeBron might be behind. Uh, Derek Fisher. Derek Fisher. I just said that. Yeah, he did recover pretty well from from the beginning of the statement. Yeah, you you gotta ride the wave. Once you ride the wave, you'll understand where we're going. Come on now. There's all there's always a beach at the end of the ocean. Come on, son. Robert Horry behind. Robert Horry? I don't know how many r- what rings they won together. Nor how long he was there. He won one? More than one. I think he had more than one. I think he had like five total. I think three were with the Lakers. I could be wrong. Three? Okay, he got he got three. He's also got at least one with the Spurs, and I'm pretty sure he's got one with the Rockets. Yeah. So LeBron, not on there. AD, he don't even get to kick the rocks at Mount Rushmore. There are there are so many other players that I would rather see even get one of the uh, eyebrows up there before Anthony Davis. Uh, yeah, but I also, I really don't have an issue with the Lakers fan base, bro. They they're solid. They're not solid. They're dumb. I didn't say anything about being smart. I said they're solid. No, no. You, can be, you can be He's solid. solid so Lakers fans solid. entertain him. That's what it boils down to. They're fun. They're fun. You you know a fan base that I can't get behind? Going to say Philly. Okay, you, you're gonna have to explain you, this. You, one to you me. meet them. I've never met. I don't think I've ever met an actual. Oh no, it's a lie. I know one person who's an actual Philly fan, but like I think he's just an annoying person in general. I don't think it has anything to do with you know the the, the Phillies themselves. The Sixers themselves, excuse me. Look, I'm not a Brooklyn Nets fan, but I am rooting for the team. After having our own Ben Simmons experience, experiment and experience, I understand why you acted the way they did. But I've never seen a fan base or a city clown one single person the way that anybody else had. That's enough for me to be like, yeah, I can't rock with Philly fans. Wait. They destroyed that dude. They destroyed that man who was already clearly hanging on by a thread. Listen, it is crazy. In, they, in their it, defense, they were they they did have his back for quite a while for for a good little while. It is crazy to blame. It was amazing. Allen. It is crazy to blame the fan base and not the player. That's wild in that instance. Like, yeah. Ben Simmons, dude, like, if you dunk that basketball, the fan base says nothing. The fan base knew you couldn't shoot, but if you stop doing layups and start to stop doing dunks, then the fan base, all of a sudden, they flipped on him. That is his fault. That's not their fault. I'm going to be real with you. How many times have you seen a player do something stupid on the court? J.R. Smith. There's no reason why any of us should like J.R. Smith based off of that statement that you just made with a player doing something really stupid. We laughed off what happened with J.R. Smith, even though we know for a fact right. he ruined he ruined that finals game right. for LeBron. We a horrible analogy. It is. It is. Shut up. Shut up. I'm talking. Uh, If that shot drops, he's hit like everybody would have loved it. Exactly. Ben Simmons passed up one shot while being the second best defender in their best primary ball handler on their team. One thing makes you completely flip on him. Uh, we, We get it. He can't shoot. But he hasn't been able to shoot his entire career. That's not new. That's right. not interesting. The yeah, fact that the entire city came down on that after we already know what he can't do? I, th- no. I think the issue isn't just what he can't do. It was like, I think it was more like a straw that broke the camel's back thing. Right. I, I need to hear you complain earlier. You feel me? 
I get you, but like you gotta understand people, right? Long as everything seems more or less good, people aren't gonna complain, even if they're a problem. You don't hear about problems in locker rooms until dudes start losing. Hey, and it's like that's exactly why relationships this country fell out the rate that they do address problems early so we can get things figured out. Listen, cool. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. You just compared uh, a, a primary ball handler to a franchise player. You can't do that. That's why the analogy doesn't work immediately. Well, so, who was viewed as a franchise player? Who's, who's the say mistakes. Say what we're talking about, hmm? talking about Calvin? There was a point in time where he was viewed as a franchise player. Or At that moment, he player. wasn't a franchise. He was not a franchise player, though. Did, we're not talking about Nuggets, JR. We're talking about Jared. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, I thought we had switched to Ben Simmons. I'm so no, 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 we're not. So the analogy that Allen gave was making comparison with the with with, with the uh, reaction from Jared Smith to Ben Simmons. That was, that was the analogy you made. You can't make that analogy inherently. A mistake is a mistake. Two Go different on. people. What? A mistake is a mistake, but keep That's going. That's not true. No, 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 You don't care. What's, what's a good analogy? Okay, right now. If Steph Curry makes a mistake in comparison to Wiseman making a mistake, for, for, for going to say, those are two separate instances because though the roles – as not 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 the, not the roles as players, but their roles as figures of the team are completely different. Like, do you see how that's, that's, a a political drastic, thing. that's a political thing, not a basketball thing? That is. I think it's clown because the turnover is a turnover, right? It doesn't matter who does the turnover. It's it does because one person you're depending on more than the other. One Would person you're depending on more than the other. You're dependent on Ben Simmons. A primary ball, def- a primary ball handler, a primary on-ball defender, and the second best player of that team, and you're, you're, you're depending on him and his necessities in comparison, his IQ in comparison to J.R. Smith. At that moment, J.R. Smith. Now, the accurate comparison would have been between, you know, if it was Kyrie or Kevin Love, something like that. That's that's that's, that's, that's accurate, but the context around it matters. That's not pretend it doesn't. No, the re- the result is the thing that matters. If no, <laughs> there's more to it than that. Philip, why does it matter who did it? Outside of the fact that you think just because this person is in a situation that they're not wait, supposed to. Wait, 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 wait. We're just I, we're just talking about that moment where like he heaved a half court shot with time left on the clock, right? No, we're talking about the moment. Who? Jr. Okay, what are we talking about? I actually we're talking about the moment when Jr. held onto the ball. And LeBron was like, call timeout, call timeout, call timeout. Yeah, when he, ran, when he was running the opposite direction. And LeBron, he should have called timeout, and he didn't call timeout. In the finals. Time the, ran out, right? I'm not the Lakers, the uh, Warriors. That's yeah. what they're talking about, right? Yeah, 2015 or 2016. One of those two, two years, yeah. Yeah. So. But, said, no, no, but we're saying this. If you are a fan, if you are on the court, at that moment, you're right. But as a fan base, looking at that moment, you are going to be incredibly upset because of the position of the person that made the mistake inherently. Your second, your second best player makes the costly mistake you as a fan are going to inherently be more upset about that if it's not or if, if, in, in comparison to a role player, especially for a game that mattered but didn't nearly matter as much as when Ben Simmons was doing his thing. And Ben and hold on, and J.R. Smith, that was one mistake. Ben Simmons made a lot of mistakes. It he did. I was, Outside of that first, no, outside of that first series, when you know they lost, I believe it was to Boston, and Ben Simmons held Joel and B was like, "Don't worry, we'll be here again." He said, "I'm paraphrasing, but he said something like that." Almost every single series after that, shooting 
that was already on every fan base, every, every fan of Philadelphia's mind it was the shooting aspect, he's not shooting. But then all of a sudden, he's making other mistakes after that by not taking the easy shots and deferring to lesser players. Then all of a sudden, it's just an much. avalanche. It's an avalanche of thought. So you can't blame you can't blame the um, the fan base on that. You have to blame the player. No, Philip, I'm not mad that you guys got mad. I am. My issue is how hard they came down on that man. It's Philly. They know that they 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 rushed at Fano at, at, at Eagles Field. You said what? When the Eagles played, they were known. Santa Claus is going down the, the down the field, and the fans threw snowballs at Santa Claus. This is like in the nineties. Philadelphia you hear that's is not known. fun, right? You know what? You hear that? How that's not fun, right? For who? <laughs> you know, for like, the fans. Like, for the fans, that sounds like a blast. Bro, that's a crowd full of assholes. Anymore. What are you talking about? That's you are that's one. Issue. <laughs> are you kidding? Are you not one? I'm not. I'm not. Oh my God! Okay, wait, 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 wait. My level of asshole is different. I am not going. I am not as a TV producer. <laughs> crazy. I would not say, "Hey, there's Ben Simmons. Is this from a trash can?" That's wild. That is that is that is a Twitter activity, and you brought that on that. I guess not national TV, but you brought that on one of the biggest news channels in Philadelphia. That's wild. That is a wild, childish thing. And as a wildly childish person, I can't rock with it. Wait, was that clowning of Simmons much worse than I initially like? Yes. It to it's, it's, go look up everything about it. It's really, really okay. bad. It's bad. It's so bad that man's broken till this day. But guess what? You destroyed a man. You, no, you didn't destroy a man. You destroyed a dude that was, what, 24 at the time? Sure. Dog. Listen, but here's the thing. But here's the thing about those kind of fan bases. Just how negative it can be to a player like that. On the flip side, when they're down for you, they will be down for you. You hear no. how that's abusive, right? You hear how that's an abusive relationship. Abusive relationship? Yeah. It's not a relationship. This is a it business. Is a what are you talking about? It's a business. Sports is no, not relationship. selling tickets is a business. Fandom is the relationship between the person and whatever it is they are a fan you of. Expl- you explained that earlier when you were talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. I do not have a relationship with the Kansas City Chiefs like that. Yeah. So it's the same exact thing with Philly like, and it's their not the same as like It's not the same as like knowing somebody, but it's still a kind of relationship. It's an abusive relationship. They're abusive. They're abusive. Can I be honest with you? Go ahead. That nigga soft. Like, why are you giving an excuse for him being soft? Like, I mean, that, that, soft. that doesn't make it not abusive. That's it just means, of course, he was going to handle it poorly. Right. But when you have all these people in Phil- Philadelphia, uh, has been around for forever. The 76 has been in the, around an organization forever. All of a sudden, one man gets broken, and all of a sudden, they abusive? One man. I'm pretty sure they had they low-key had they, that kind of reputation prior they got to a history. Like so, there there were some nights where they booed AI. That's crazy. Some nights they booed AI. AI, that city loved AI. So we can't base a few nights where they booed AI out of a whole out of a whole scenario. I mean, if I mean, we're trying to make the argument if you, like, if that, you love me, you gotta love me. Even at my worst. Like there's con- there's constructive criticism, and then there's being like, get off the court. One's wild. One's those, re- no, no. wild. those reasons that you're saying that you don't like Philadelphia, then you should like no hey, fans. I just say Phil- I don't like Philadelphia. I rock with Philadelphia. The same fans. I don't. You should like no seventy. You, you should like no fan base then. Almost every single fan base the exact same way, but so- that, that that has won something, that has had a great player or has won something. Each fan base is that exact same way. I've never seen Atlanta do anything poorly. Atlanta who? You, you, the Hawks? The Hawk Lily. And you said great player, Dominique Wilkins. Bad respect. Dominique Wilkins is still mad respected to this day. I know they ain't never won nothing. But you know what's crazy? That adds on to the legacy of Jordan 
because the entire time he's happened to play in an era where no one could be mad at their person for not winning because everybody saw how good, how great Dominique was. But the fact that he kept losing to Jordan, and he was in the Jordan era, the even the fan base of, of uh, even that fan base was like, okay, Charles Barkley, okay. If Akeem Olajuwon didn't win, people, people would be going, like, yeah, he played in the Jordan era, like it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like that's that has that has a very specific scenario. That said, Philly was on Charles Barkley's head at some point, too. He was a rookie. I don't care. Unhealthy behavior. It's, it's, it's Hold a, on, stop. They were on his head, but still, but he still claims them. He claims Phoenix more, obviously, but Charles Barkley still claims them. He, he, because he's not soft. The place where you became a superstar, you would rather pick the team where you were old. What do you mean by that? He was. You grow up in a place you naturally have an attachment because that's where you become a human. You mean to tell me he go to the place where he played three seasons and he would rather rock with Phoenix than Philly? Because he took Phoenix further in the playoffs. They went to the NBA Finals. No, no. And this is like the moment where, the, or this is a moment in time where. It was so difficult to get to the NBA Finals that when he did that, the city huddled around him because he was that guy at that moment. When he was in Philadelphia, Philadelphia was still on the the the, the bandwagon, the coattails of Dr. J. So mm-hmm. so he had so he hadn't reached that limelight yet to be able to to really grow up to that level until he ended up leaving. So that those are very specific scenarios. And honestly, what I just said is hella hard because I just thought about it just now. Listen, that's the biggest difference between that. Charles Barkley, if Charles Barkley would have been drafted there and they would have been a legitimately really bad team and Dr. J wouldn't have been there, I think your point would have more validation. But the fact that he had leg- like legendary status people there, a.k.a. Dr. J., and I'm not sure he was there at the same time as most below. But right? But like he didn't blossom to himself in that moment. He didn't come to become the man, as you is for your analogy, at that moment. He had to leave to really build into that. That's why Philadelphia, or not Philadelphia, that's why Phoenix and him being able to reach the NBA final stuff like that when that scenario is why he tends to clamor on some a little bit more. You do know there was like two seasons where Charles Barkley was better than Moses Malone and Julius. Better Moore. than? Don't mean. Do- Dr. J was about 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 washed by the time Barkley showed up. But it's Dr. J. I, don't uh, know. Uh, I got you. For 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 people you look, uh, like X. no, listen for people That's a relationship. No, also, for people with Dr. Also, J, Barkley was J. cold most of his time in Philly. I just. I'd like to point that out. But once again, I don't think this has anything to do with skill, though. This is, you are under the ghost. You are under the legacy. You are under, figuratively, of course, the legend of Dr. J, which people still talk to to this day. Mike Johnson says, the coolest guy at that moment that he ever saw and he wanted to emulate was Dr. J. You can't outgrow that no matter how good you are your first couple, your first seasons of the NBA. You can't break out in that in those moments because it's Dr. J. Dr. J wasn't on most of those teams that Barkley was on, though. Calvin, how many years was Barkley in Philadelphia? You know, I'm sick that Calvin all of a sudden will start looking things up. <laughs> you know, I am sick. You know, I'm sick. That, that, I'm just, I'm Calvin. sorry. I'm just like, Why I've now, seen, Calvin? I've Why looked now? some of this up before. But I did pull it up, but I looked some of this up before. I'm like, some of this sounds wrong. Calvin, how long was uh, Charles Barkley on Philly? Eight seasons. Eight seasons. Was it that when long? Did, when, did, uh, when did Julius Irvin leave? leave? Uh, I think Come on. definitely by his third season. Let me double check. Ah, dang it. Don't remember how it went. I'll... Give me four. Give me four. Come on. <laughs> I really okay, hope let's see. Four. I'm hearing a lot um, on this. No. Let's see. Come on. Right, Barkley's third year in the league. Give me half. Give me half. 
Mm-hmm. Ah, he was still there in the th- on the third year. I don't think he did much though. I don't care about me doing much. He's still there. <laughs> if as long as he's there, that proves my point. I don't care about doing much. Come on, come hey, on. By the way, third season is mine. If he's there for the fourth hey, season, that's I'm yours. Sweating. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, this is the this took a left, but it, uh, Barkley's third season was uh, Doctor J's last season there. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just saying. With- Legends last longer than players. Shut it up. They're both legends. Uh, Calvin, when mm-hmm. did Charles Barkley make his first All Star game? He made the first All Star game his third year in the league. I'm just saying. 86, 87. What do you, and what do you didn't say? stop making All Star games until 97, 98. What do you, what do you, just, just, what do you, what do you, what do you mean you're saying? What do you mean? I'm just saying it, it goes back. <clears throat> If you have five years where you are the man, right. you are one of the top three players, and they, they still find reasons to have an issue with you. Toxic relationship. Shut up. It doesn't get much better than this. If Grant, you, Grant, you want to be upset about something? Shut it. Grant, come on. I don't know when they ever had a problem with Charles Barkley. I never heard this. It, it is. Look it up. And if not, a lot. Look it, it up. Because it's recorded. Who cares? It's the internet. See, uh... You want to say look it up? Calvin, look it up right now. Calvin, don't look that up. We we got to move to the next segment. <laughs> oh, we do, on, we've dog. been on this. T- we 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 we've been on them too long, honestly. I don't even. Uh, I don't care about this fan base. Nobody should. Nobody. Unless I feel like this is one of those regional fan bases. Like if you find a Philly fan in in Miami, I got questions. Like you got to be a transplant. Ain't no way. There's, it just doesn't make sense. I feel like they shouldn't have had, despite Joel MB being the man that he is, he killer, he's super dominant. They should not have gained more fans since the Sam Pinky era. That should have been the last time they got a new fan, right before the process. I the only believe that I know is from college, and that's because he's from Philadelphia. I don't know. I don't even know these people. I just know they're them doing to television or whatever. It's a it's a super regional team. I'm okay with that. Stay over there. Stay up. Stay up. Toxic self is self is over there. I don't need y'all in my life. Okay, Calvin. What team don't you like? Uh, uh the fan base of so. Honestly, I I don't like the Warriors fan base. I'm gonna be real. Respect. I hate them too. I hear they're annoying. I haven't seen anything. Like so like a lot of my issue with them is like they seem to have this weird like hate of like the Grizzlies and Ja Morant in particular. Um and like I get right, the Grizzlies, Ja, they talk a lot of shit. It's fun. Um but it's just like y'all know don't nobody think about you like this, right? Like, it's, I don't, I don't understand it. It's just like, okay, right? Y'all are fans of the, what, the team was, what, like the most successful team of what, like the last decade? Yeah. Like, why are you worried that, like, a young Grizzlies team talks shit? Because they scared. They know it's almost over. That's definitely what it's looking like. I, I've I've seen I've seen them standing. Yeah. Outside of the Warriors begging for attention between like 2016 to like 2020, I don't really have an issue with them. They they seem like <clears throat> their fan base seems very redhead stepchild. Like we want to be loved too. Like that's it. And it's like sh- shut up. <laughs> like. You got the best shooting duo of all time and, and the greatest defensive player of all time in Hendrick Mockery. I'm going to say you. <laughs> you I'm, got, not no. talking, I'm not talking. Keep going. You, you, you just clout chasing. Keep going. It's crazy. No, I really did that just to bother you because I know how much of a fan you are of Draymond Green and you've expressed that several times on this podcast. So I just thought I would shout out your favorite player. Listen, I got the kids at school telling me Draymond Green stats now. 
because they know it bothers me. You, how did they find this information? Debating basketball. Once again. I don't know why you'd be surprised. Because I won't say a word. If you, it's one of our most viral clips on YouTube. <laughs> me, me, no, no, me, no. I'm just, I'm just like me going to. I'm just like, of course they, of course you'd have some of some of the folks you teach do that. That's all I'm saying. Of course. Listen, I, we talk basketball. I'll listen. I'm ready. And Golden State, they fans annoying because they fans are like new NBA fans who don't, also don't know about basketball, right? So like, like historically. Lakers fans don't know about basketball. They don't know about Lakers fans. Or they don't know about Lakers teams. But nowadays, Golden State has taken that, like, that baton and ran with it. They don't know nothing about basketball except Steph Curry. So is that a California issue, dude? No. I think it's just... I ignorant. think it's just... The, it, I think it's the consequence of the success. <clears throat> yeah, that's... I agree with that. Like, you get, you get success... You get, you get really good. You get a couple rings. You get a bunch of bandwagon fans. But at least Lakers fans are better than than eight years, right? Lakers fans are better than they've been they've been good for a long time. Golden State just got good, in the, in the, like the grand scheme of like basketball history, they just got good. Yeah. So all of a sudden, why do they get to be that stupid? They ain't got enough clout to be that stupid. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you have to be this successful to be this dumb. So his, historically speaking. Do you have an issue with their fan base? Because I thought the late, not the Lakers. So, I don't know why people want to say the Lakers. The We Believe Warrior fans, they seem like they was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, Tim Hardaway fans and Chris Mullen fans, a uh, little uh, uh, Chris Webber, you know what I mean? They seem to be all right. But then, like, they didn't win nothing. And all of a sudden, you got Baron Davis and, you know, the Redeem and all kind of stuff. What is the Redeem team, what are they called? That little mm-hmm. Baron Davis and... Um, and you know when he dunked that dude, and they had a little bit of what? We believe. We believe. Oh, yeah. Redeem team. We believe. Oh, I don't keep up all these nicknames. Redeem team is 2008 Olympics. Come on. Oh yeah. History man. So y'all basketball players, listen. The um, the we the we believe all kind of stuff. Like that was cool, but like they were just a good NBA team that didn't that wasn't winning nothing. Then they win, and all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, we we the best ever, and we got the best teams ever, and you guys could get the best shooter ever. Don't mean you got the best teams ever. I'll, I'll, I'll argue that to the Roosters Crow home, or whatever that saying is. Right? Like, Golden State Warriors are the new annoying Dallas come home. Sure, something like that. Uh, no, actually, that is it. My bad. Um, but I, I'll argue that to the, this day. Um, I've had arguments with Golden State Warriors fans that don't know basketball. Because as soon as I start start bringing up analogies and different people uh, from different teams, they get lost. I'm like, oh, I can't talk to you then. Because all you know about is basketball from 2013 to 2021, whatever it is, 2022. If if that's all you know, I can't talk to you. I can't talk to people who are – I can't have conversations with people who are 20 20 years old and younger. Because that's all they know, unfortunately. So, like, in a weak defense of a – fan base that I don't particularly care for. Um, something I did see reading a book or something. Basically, you can track like, you know, fan bases and whatever by uh, like, how good a team was, like from roughly the time a person was I don't know, 10 or 12, about the time they started actually paying attention to about the time they hit college, pretty much. Right, middle school, college, and the team, and like you're more likely to be a fan of a team that was good in that time period. Right, so this is going to explain, like, that that basically explains all of our fandoms, low key. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it would explain the Warriors. It would also, now that I think about it, probably kind of explain why they're so annoying, because they are. Because, like you said, they are young and they, they, they just, they just found out about basketball. Yeah. <sighs> Ignorance, <clears throat> right? That's, that is my little brother to a T. Like he, he watched basketball with us, but 
his favorite players are like new kids. Okay, like you. Give me, give me one example. He loves Damian Lillard. Well, I hope so. Dame is best case before, scenario for a new kid. Before Dame, his favorite player was Steph. But he's like chucking threes. He's like chuck, ch- chucking threes from deep. That's all he likes. I mean, but I don't know if you you probably haven't seen my little brother play. That was his game. Like we're talking about like second, third grade. He already had range from half court. It was really stupid. And we're we're talking about like each range from like a step inside of half court. It, it didn't make sense. Well, that's how every kid plays <laughs> now. You know, that's how every kid plays now. Um, it's not good. You get a three-on-two fast break, and you shooting threes. I don't get it, but it's fine because everybody wants to play like Steph Curry, but not everybody can shoot like Steph Curry. But like coaches aren't coaching well enough to be able to just like explain that to kids. It's, there, 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 there's a weirdly high amount of uh, bad coaching out here. That's just my opinion, though. How much of that do y'all think is just analytics-based versus? I, I don't. I don't. I'm trying to find an excuse for that stupid stuff. <laughs> But I don't think there is an excuse for yeah, this. Opinion. It was. It would be analytics based. That could be a reason that you could blame, or that could be a thing that you could blame it on if it was just the NBA. But if you're seeing it in like middle school and elementary schools, it's not <clears throat> analytics based. It is culture based. Yeah. Most and most whenever the most pop, I mean, I, I watched thing the other day. Basketball turns into whatever the most popular player is. So when Steph Curry retires, it's going to be something else, unless somebody just is exactly like Steph Curry. But the thing is, there's no Steph – like, even with all these people shooting threes like they do today, there is only one Steph Curry. Yeah. Right? Trey Young does so, a pretty good imitation. No, not this season. Not this season. He is not. Who? Uh, Trey Young. Trey Young. Trey Young is back to being Trey Buns. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a Trey Young guy anyways, um, but let's say, I mean, let's say Steph goes down, right? I mean, it doesn't it goes down, but let's say he, there's, there, there's like a decline in the next two years, which in his age, that is a likely occurrence, right? Kids are going to start playing more like Luka. I'm okay with that. I want that. That's I, I mean, well, on, on some level, on some I'm level. Not oh. like, they're not going to understand why Luka's stuff works. They're not. But so like, like they're gonna get, so a lot of them are gonna get their feelings hurt. My bad. I meant white boys are gonna start playing a lot like Luca. That's what I meant to say. Like the statement still stands. I mean, but like we could get another another Larry. They are that. going I mean, but like which isn't a good thing anyways, right? I mean, all that is is like is ball dominance, the assist has to go through me basketball. Right? So it's Russell Westbrook with more with more skill. Right? I mean, that's, that's, that's also LeBron. But LeBron's six eight to what LeBron's six eight uh two forty but runs like he's five ten and jumps like he's uh you know a, like 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 he's Derrick Rose, right? Like that's the difference. Luca is l- at least bad at about five hundred off that list. Listen, at least you go at least you uh go to uh Luca and go, hmm, he looks like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he got a little baby fat still, you know. But like LeBron don't look like nobody. He don't. He never, especially when his prime, he didn't pack nobody. So like it's, it was how LeBron plays. But LeBron's Luca to the next level. You know what I mean? So it's it's interesting. Um, I, I can see that being a way, but you know it's it's not great, but it is a reality of things. Um, but all that being said, uh, Dallas Mavericks fans, they aren't they aren't annoying. Which is good, so. Cuban kind of is, though. Oh, absolutely. But he's a, but he's not an indication Cuban, of the fan base. Cuban. Good thing he's not an indication of the fan base. They are annoying. Like, for every, for every team that has an annoying fan base, there are teams that counteract that, right? Like, Bulls fans aren't annoying, right? I uh, don't or, hear nothing about from Bulls fans. Fair point. Uh, Toronto fans are annoying. Toronto fans are annoying. You did yours. Raptors fans 
Raptors fans are Drake fans. Drake you fans are. Fans? Huh? Wait, hold on. Wait. So you're fans? you're upset at them because Drake came from Canada? A little bit. <laughs> a little. Let me off with you. A little bit. I'm on. I'm on the same page. He, he rolled that wave crazy. It makes me. It, it, it like I haven't seen him with them this season. I don't like, really remember him being there last season that much. Yeah. Either. Like, but honestly, though, it's gross. not even like I know Raptors fans in person. It's just the way they look on TV is annoying. Because them and the Miami just disrespectful. their fan bases on TV are annoying. Miami Heat fans are extra annoying because they're not in the stands until the second quarter. And they're not back in the and then after halftime, they're not back in the stands till the fourth quarter. Yeah, they're, they're fan they leave early. Before the game's even ended. I'm like, and that's what, but that's what happens when you have a tourist destination city and the actual fan base. Hey, let me, I think I told, I think we talked about this last season. I went to a Miami Heat game. Mm-hmm. I think part of the issue is they have one of the worst stadiums, uh, stadiums, arenas, whatever you want to call it, I have ever seen. For it to be a big money place, that has competed really hard over the last 15 or so years. It looks like the 1980s in there. It's I'm like it's poorly it's kept. Bad. Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't, I would not be a proud fan in those stands, bro. It's it's awful. Like there's zero leg room. When I tell you, you are in the rafters. You are in the rafters. It is. It's gross. It's gross. They yeah. need to things immediately. Like, I think if there's one fan base I don't want to interact with in real life, it's a Miami Heat fan. Like, they, they, how, how do you seem pretentious on TV? Like, I'm just looking at you, and even your celebrities are extra pretentious. Yeah. Like, T.D. Kelly got a pillow under his Jordans? You yeah. see that? That's, That's wild. Cool. But, like, I'm tired of seeing DJ Khaled dribble the ball, basketball. By the way, that he needs he needs Drew Hamlin and Mary, some type of NBA trainer. Cause God, like you doing that, you got to be doing that on purpose. Yeah, he, yeah, he he dribbled like Stanley off the office. That's not good. Like it's it's I don't know. It's uh Miami Heat fans, even when they're winning, like major winning with LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, you get like their their stands were still. Filling up when the game started, it like didn't feel right. I was like, "Oh, y'all, y'all annoying!" Like I could just feel it, um, because like I guess it's also like I'm used to like OKC fans whose fans when they're winning are there from like tip off and like don't sit to like, like they're like college, you know what I mean? Like it's a very college in, exuberance and, and and aura about them. So to see the opposite of that kind of just like it stands out to me. Yeah, it's the difference between it being one of the social events in town and being the only social. Also, do the Kings have a fan base? You talking about yes, the Sacramento? That's don't. what I was I was going to ask that earlier when we were talking about how annoying um, the Lakers and the Warriors fan base is. Because we're going to have to find out how annoying the Kings fan base is to figure out if it's just a California problem. For that to well, happen first, I feel like for that to happen first, the Kings need to be good. They won't just say win the season. They just need to <laughs> 43 games. You don't so even got to make the playoffs. Just 43 games. So once out of every 25 years. Yeah. I mean, they were okay in the 2000s back in... Every 25 years. <laughs> that was also a short stint in the 2000s. It was, what, like five years, maybe? Oh, the stint was incredibly short. Yeah, like it's... Good team. J. J- Will, Chris Webber, good team. Stint, wildly short. Good team or fun team? Good team. You went to the NBA, the Winter Cup Finals. Yeah. And lost to the Lakers. Portland went to the uh, Western Conference Finals. That doesn't mean a lot to me, bro. Well, it was a good team. I mean, okay. The issue, was, the, the issue, was, the issue was the big man was like, the big man was not up to par, right? That's the issue. But Portland was a good team. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Okay. All right. Hey, I appreciate you guys 
Appreciate you guys for tuning in for the entire uh, episode. If you got this far, go ahead, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. We're here just about every week of the entire season. So please check back with us every single Tuesday. We'll be dropping that episode unless I'm tired. And then you'll get it sometime during the rest of the week. Just being honest. Again, I have been your host, Alan Prediger Jr. In front of you are my two best friends in the world, and they're going to go ahead and sign us out. Um, once again, I'm Calvin McGowan. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, actually, I, I don't got anything that I was trying to think. I'll do it for you. Philip, why are you so cringy? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Go. Oh, why are you? Okay. <laughs> uh, that's something else to say. Uh, yeah, my name is Philip Dixon, a.k.a. My Mind Telling Me No, but my, you know the rest. And, uh, yeah, just uh, subscribe down below. Click that bell for notifications, which I thought someone was going to say. That's why I was waiting so long. And yeah. then, uh, no, you're good. We are the Travelers. Just, 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 like, just do the whole bleep thing when you edit this. No, put everybody put cringe in the comments. I don't even care if it's a review. Leave a five star review and then say Philip is cringe. Damn, why your hands so big? That's crazy. Hey, genetics is a wonderful thing. (laughs) This man got Bill Russell hands.